Okay. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Ajay Shastril. Uh, so now, we are, uh, our group will present Risk Survey and Assessment of Environment for subject Introduction to Risk and Insurance UBM 5E8 for our lecturer Dr. Nuriha Abdullah. So this uh, list of member, I just start with me, Aidy Shazril, Muhammad Ashraf, Zari Zalfan, Muhammad Shazaim, Noor Arina Atira, and last but not least, Hanani Zahida. Uh, we from BAC, uh, BAE60. Content of table for presentation. Uh, for uh, introduction, uh, we uh, choose a crushes for our topic. Aircrashes and accurance uh, associated with the operation of an aircraft which take place from the time any person boards the aircraft with the intention of flight until all such person has disembarked and in which a person is fatally or seriously injured, the aircraft sustainly significant damage or structural failure, and last, the aircraft goes missing or become completely inaccessible. So this list example of accident involving aircraft. Turkish Airlines flight 6491 on uh, 16 January 2017. A Saha Airlines Boeing 707 crashes on 16 14 January 2019 and last. Sri Vijaya Air flight 182 on 9 January 2021. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Zariza Fan bin Muhammad Zaini So I will present about potential risk related to air crash So for my point is climate change So climate change is projected to affect aviation in 5 ways Temperature, precipitation, storm pattern, sea level and wind pattern So the performance of aeroplane, infrastructure and demand pattern are all affected by change in temperature Perception pattern that have changed may cause more delay and cancellation. More severe storm are forecast, causing more disruption to travel plan. Rising sea level may restrict airport capacity and disrupt transportation network. Changing wind pattern might exacerbate turbulence, lengthen travel duration, and create delays. So, for evaluating the potential risk for climate change. Frequency is high, severity also high. So for appropriate risk management technique for climate change, we using uh, risk avoidance, loss prevention, and loss reduction if possible. So the benefit of the technique, a risk avoidance approach aim to reduce the number of vulnerability that can be exploited. Policy and procedure training and education and technological Installation may all help to minimize and mitigate price risk. Loss control, also known as risk reduction, can be achieved by loss prevention, which reduces the likelihood of loss or loss reduction, which minimizes the loss. Loss prevention is recognizing the element that trace the chance of a loss and then removing or reducing their impact. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Shazaim bin Abdul Aziz and I will present about the existing and potential risk. The incident that I choose is B737 en route west southwest of Pensacola, Florida, USA 2016. The existing risk that has been found in this incident is sudden explosive noise was followed by indication of left engine failure which will lead to the potential risk is lost control of the aircraft. The second existing risk is the crew did not complete the emergency checklist which will lead to the engine failure of the aircraft. Next, evaluating the potential risk. Firstly, engine failure is at low frequency and high severity. Why? Because it rarely happens but if it happens, it will be a threat to the airplane also to the passenger. Next, the crew did not complete on the emergency checklist which is at high frequency and high severity because the crew frequently overlook on the emergency checklist which will cause everything on the airplane also to the passenger if engine failure is occur. Next, determine and select the appropriate risk management technique. The first risk management technique is risk control loss prevention 
which is any failure are avoided by changing the unusable parts. Second, risk control reduction. By doing maintenance from time to time, we reduce the risk of loss control. And the last one is risk financing retention, which gives more practice and training to the crew so that they will have more knowledge and always be alert on completing the emergency checklist. My name is Nur Arina Atira Binti Adri. Next, I will move to the next potential risk, which is mechanical failure. Here, I have listed a few accidents that caused by mechanical failure, such as manufacturing defect, design defect, failure to appropriately inspect aircraft, failure to properly maintain aircraft, failure to timely replace component parts, and metal fatigue. I evaluate mechanical failure as a low frequency and high severity because low frequency and high severity risks are those that may not occur often but when they do, the consequences are profound. Equipment failure still account for around 20% of aircraft losses despite improvement in design and manufacturing quality. It can cause life losses as well. While engines are significantly more reliable today than they were half a century ago, they still occasionally uh, suffer catastrophic failures. So here I have listed um, a few airplane crashes that caused by mechanical failure. So in my opinion, the best risk management technique for mechanical failure is risk transfer. Risk transfer is by taking an insurance because insurance is the best technique to deal with risks that have low loss frequency and high loss severity. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this mechanical failure will impact on the aircraft losses and also life losses. So these types of risks are usually catastrophic that might bankrupt your business. These are uh, examples of risks that are insurance that you can take public li liability insurance and in-flight insurance. Hello and assalamualaikum to our lecture, Dr. Noriha. My name is Hanani Zahida Binti Helmi. I will present on the two that following mid-air collision of two helicopters in Malaysia, which happened in Taman Melawati, Selangor. Okay. To the first existing risk is the two helicopters are flying at the same time, which is the potential risk, as we can see, is the risk of collision for those two. Second one is disrupted sensors or satellite navigation risk. So this will lead to unable to track the exact position of the helicopters. For third one is the third inadequate practice and training pilot will lead to them unexpected loss control of the maneuver when they cannot handle the situation. Okay, from the list that I've mentioned before is we need to identify the frequency and severity of risk so that we can provide the best risk management technique. Okay, for this one, is I will explain on the technique chosen. The first one is the risk control, which is on loss prevention, which condition of the two helicopters are avoided by making appropriate time management for both helicopters to fly, which they need to try to avoid for both helicopters to fly at the same time. Second one is the risk control on loss reduction. It's to do the maintenance of the software of the sensors for the helicopters to ensure the usage of the software is in a, co in a good condition, which can be made every year. For third one is the risk financing on retention, which they need to provide adequate training and practices for pilot. And also the company should bear the consequences of the losers such as providing compensation for the employees that become the breadwinner of the family if there is an accident happens that includes injury or death. And now let's we move to the conclusion and recommendation. Okay, for the conclusion, the whole experience of the crashes of the aircraft was a horrifying nightmare. In order to further this the number of accidents, stricter measure of availability and aircraft operability prior to take off need to be implemented. And additionally, better training of pilot can also lead to a more favorable outcome should a problem arise as the pilot will be better equipped to handle an emergency. 
and for the recommendation it should emphasize the importance of providing operators with information about the specific type and location of a trick item and the second point is uh, it indicate how new passenger screening technology are integrated into long-range implementation plan for aviation airport security and the third one is uh, use a variety of means to assess public reaction to new passengers with new technology. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.